Miley Cyrus at the uh, VMAs last week on MTV created a stir, to say the least. And it raises the question, what kind of influence does a performance like that, and really the change that we've seen from Miley Cyrus, what kind of influence does it have on our young girls of today? I've got a seven-year-old daughter. It's a question that comes up for me all the time. Dr. Wendy Rice is a licensed psychologist. She's also the founder of the Rice Psychology Group. Tons of experience working with teens, adolescents, and, and children. And, and Dr. Rice, I guess we start there. Can a performance like that, that, my, uh, that Miley Cyrus had on the VMAs, can it influence young people today to a point where we ought to be concerned? Kids are watching it. I think it was such a departure from the Miley Cyrus slash Hannah Montana that we knew. Even the kids were surprised. Kids are going to model their behavior somewhat after celebrities. My hope is that parents were watching the VMAs with their kids and had a chance to talk about it with them and a chance to process it a little bit. Yeah, or should we be concerned too? I mean, these uh, these young stars, the Miley Cyrus, the jo uh, Justin Bieber's of the world, they grow up, and, and, and they grow up too fast, to be honest with you, in my opinion, uh, and they try to be adults before they're ready. But do we have to have that conversation with young people who are fans of them as as tween stars to, to let them know, okay, listen, things are about to change for me? How do you have that conversation? Well, I don't think we can have it that things are about to change so much as we can have it as, is to talk to your daughter. Well, what do you think of that? Do you like that? Do you like the? Do you like what she used to be a little bit better than what she is now? What do you think that says to people about her? You kind of want to get the dialogue going if you can, so that you know what your kids are thinking. Because not all kids are going to have the same reaction. I think that I don't really know who was advising Miley Cyrus to perform in that way. Apparently, Justin Bieber. Mm. But you know, it's almost like okay, I'm not a kid anymore. I'm letting y'all know. Is I'm that an adult, and I want to be considered an adult. Yeah, Dr. Rice, that was my first thought, and, and I was talking to some friends over the weekend about it, and our overwhelming take, and some of, you know, the people I was chatting with were in, also in their 20s, and, you know, their take was, wow, this is so sad. This used to be Hannah Montana, this wholesome girl. She had the world at her fingertips. Is this her, you know, just coming out and saying, look, this is me now, like you were saying, her own statement, or is she just uh, someone who's in trouble? Something has gone really wrong. And I wish I knew the answer to that, and I don't know. You know, I hate to, for there to be rumors going around that something is terribly wrong when, in fact, there might not be. Think about how our parents reacted to Elvis, not that my parents, you know, or the Beatles, or Madonna. And, uh, you know, certainly... Those were some influential musicians and performers who, you know, changed the face of music, but they didn't entirely change the face of our, our children. Yeah, but when you think about it, uh, someone like Miley Cyrus, who is this innocent Hannah Montana, and, and you have kids who, who've looked up to her, who have been fans of hers, and then all of a sudden she comes out with this performance, and you're not prepared for it ahead of time as a parent, and your kid is watching it. Right, you're uh, mortified. Yeah, you're mortified as, as it happens. I, I, I'm curious as to the psyche of kids because they don't always just say, well, then I don't like her anymore. I, I worry that kids say, well, maybe that's the way it's supposed to be now. And that's why we've got to be talking to them. That's why we can't leave kids completely to their own devices in this world. And so, obviously, so that's when I'm hoping that parents are saying, well, let's talk about it. Let's look at it together. What do you think this performance says about her? X, 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 X. Is that what, you know, is that what you want? That might be Miley's decision. Right. I, I saw a great, great uh, video that's been going around the Internet from a, she's a mom, and I think she has to be either tween or, or teen kids, and she's talking right to the camera, and she says, I'm going to show you how to twerk. I don't know if you guys have seen this. She's like, all right, here's how you do it. You stand up, and here's what you do, and then you squat down. She says, and then you take all of your pride and all the good things about you and you throw them out the door and you know what i'm not going to teach you how to do and she turns that around and it was just it was an inspirational video from this cool young mom saying you know what you want to throw everything out the window you're never going to get a man to marry you then you're going to wonder why they treat you i mean it, she used that she turned this into what i think is going viral now so Hopefully we'll see more of that, Dr. Rice, I mean, you know, using it for a learning, a teaching moment. I saw somebody wrote something that was really interesting, which is that, well, if you are a girl and you want to dress and suggestively and, you know, show your breasts and, and you really think that that's going to attract a guy, remember that the guy that's going to attract is going to still be looking at other people 
like that. So if that's the kind of boyfriend you want, just know that it's a boyfriend who's going to be looking at other girls and is going to be going at them. And is that really the kind of guy that you want to attract? When does that conversation start? I have a seven-year-old. I mean, yeah, you know, it might be starting. <laughs> it depends on your seven-year-old. Are you serious? It depends on your seven-year-old. It depends the morning that your seven- or eight-year-old comes out with a shirt that's not really appropriate or whatever. You say, and you have to kind of start asking a little bit appropriately, appropriately, because you certainly don't want to plan ideas in her head. You know, you know what's interesting is we, we try to, uh, and, and I guess this is a bad word, shield our kids from some of this pop culture stuff. They, they don't really know pop music. They don't, they're not watching all these you know, new television shows that are out and things like that. And it's funny, when you talk to other parents about that, they feel guilty if they did that. Uh, you know, it's like parents say, I don't want to shield them from that music because their other, their friends know about it and they don't know it. I'm like, well, that's why you're the parent. I mean, are, you know, don't you have that title to make that decision? You absolutely do. But you're also walking a fine line because you want your kids to be accepted on the one hand and you want your kids to know the stuff that is going on with other kids, but you want your kids to have judgment and discretion. All right, so then how do you do it? I mean, you're walking that fine line. I mean, how do, how do, you, how do you shield them from Miley Cyrus? Uh, yet still enable them to be able to get along with their peers? Or is it that important to be part of the in group? So much of growing up is wanting to belong and wanting to be a part of, but there are many ways to belong and be a part of. You know, being part of a sports team, you're a part of. You know, being part of a class, you're a part of. Going to, you know, your church or your temple, you're a part of. So there's many different ways for kids to belong. And sure, it's possible. They always blame it on their parents. My parents won't let me watch. <laughs> yeah, Dr. Wendy Rice is with us right now. And I guess the final thought on this is I had a parent tell me one time that the easiest way to, uh, to uh, give yourself a fighting chance when it comes to raising kids is just to simply stay in their business and stay in their business at all costs. Mm -hmm. That's why I say you got to watch the stuff with your kids so that you can watch their reactions and see what they what they think, and be a part of the conversation and and know and be able to ask the right questions. I agree with you a thousand percent, even though they don't necessarily want you in their business. All right, Dr. Wendy Rice uh, with the Rice Psychology Group. Thanks for the time this morning. I'll be honest with you, Brad. You both of your kids are grown. Sean's daughter's grown. This scares the hound out of me. I, I do have a little piece of advice to someone who does have two grown children. Yes. Something not like not in this subject matter, but. Yeah. Something inappropriate came up in our daughter's AP English class right, when right. she was in high school. Right. So I went to meet the teacher. Uh -huh. And the teacher explained to me very kindly, very nicely, she said, she said, what we're trying to do is desensitize your daughter to this type of material.